It's like an 80 foot wide pool. For a whale, that's like being in a prison cell. Almost five decades of being away from your family, if you can only imagine. Tokatai's family still lives here in the Salish Sea. We really relate to uh, what the whale's going through. The taking away of our culture, our history, our language, our values, and the breaking up of our families. You know, that happened to us. And you look at her, that happened to her too. She was taken away from her family. All the other ones that were captured during that time are all gone now. We think she has an attitude of perseverance in the face of great odds. We've got to have the same type of fighting spirit. We will bring her home. She is coming home. My name is Jeff Foster. I did uh, early captures in the U.S. from 1970 to 1976. I started when I was 15 years old. I just wanted to learn more about them. The only way to do it, I thought at the time, was putting them in a, in a fish tank. And these are very valuable animals. This was a brand for, for SeaWorld. Here in the, in the Puget Sound, what we used to do is we'd herd the animals into an area or bay. We'd charter a plane every morning and fly the area and try to find out where the wells were because we didn't have movement patterns or anything else back then. We were just at the beginning stages of understanding these animals. They were perceived in a different way. It was a different time where the fishermen would shoot the animals and most of the animals that we would capture or that, that we came across had bullet holes in them. These were the worst possible species. You didn't get near them or close to them or get out of the water, shoot at them. And I had shot at them as a, as a teenager. So then I really, re really wasn't involved and didn't think much about it until the day of the, of the uh, capture in, in Bud Inlet. We were just out sailing in Bud Inlet. There was a whole pot of whales coming towards us. They were swimming really fast and on the surface. Then we realized that, that there was a boat chasing them. They were lighting seal bombs, which are like triple size M80s, as fast as they could and dropping them in the water. So they drove the whales right up to uh, past the country club where they couldn't go, you know, the water's real shallow. Then the whales realized they were out of space and they turned and made a run for it. And by that time, the big fishing boat, Pacific Mate, had set a set net across the bay. And so when the whales went back, they ran right square to that set net. As they closed the net ends, it really got gruesome. You could hear the whales screaming to each other back and forth. I can still hear it sometimes. And I know that people laugh at that and they say, oh, it couldn't have been that bad. It was awful. It was just, it was disgusting and sick. <coughs> you know, just the sounds that whales make, but they were frantic. I, I will never forget it. And there's some things you never forget. This was all new ground. This was all new territory. Trying to save a whale? We won. And uh, it was the last whale capture in America. You know, there's no way it would happen today, but how did it happen in the past? What was the justification? What was our thinking? It's a sad moment in history. 
the only reason we have any southern residents is because of those two men's action. They recognized it was wrong and they had to be stopped. Otherwise, they would have took them all. You know, they shouldn't be, shouldn't be caught for captivity. That's why I spent, I spent 20 years recapturing them and I've spent the last 30 trying to change it around. We're one of the few places in America where you can still see these huge species right amongst us. The whale is a symbol of our commitment to the health of the Salish Sea. You know, we can't wait. We, and and to, to not think we're at a tipping point is, is uh, I don't know if that's ignorance or naive. We just do what we can to uh, tell the story for these generations, create a momentum.